Hello and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. Just look at that site down there. A huge crowd of people assembled. The show has already started. You know what I'm going to say. On this show, I help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. I sit them down with one of our regular dealers. They'll try and tempt you. They'll try and buy your goods off you for the very best price. It's warming now. Only warming? Only warming. I thought I was getting pretty hot. If I don't think the offer is good enough, I'm going to say do not accept that offer under any circumstances. Have a gamble. Go to auction. You just might get a little bit more money there. Today the show comes to you from Nottingham. Great crowd. We've already started. People are determined to do business. You know why they're here. They want to walk away with cash in their pocket. They want the real deal. The dealer's den is bursting at the seams with all manner of antiques and collectibles. First up, we're at Corrie Jeffrey's table. Will she want to sample this Victorian needlework? You can tell me about this item that you brought along. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a thing called a sampler, actually. Uh, I picked it up from a car boot about five months ago. And uh, what caught my eye, which was quite interesting about it, was that uh, it, uh, the person's name was on it, and it was dated 1849, which is very interesting, really, you know? Emma. Is it Willard or Millard? I think it's Millard. 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 And the date, 1849. Yeah. And these samplers were done by young girls. And in a way, they were part of their education. It taught them how to sew, do fine sewing, but it also taught them alphabet, numbers, Bible, <laughs> taught them religion. And this one, we've got a quote. So we've got a whole verse here. Let's have a look at it. It's from Isaiah. And it's quite a famous quotation. And every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the high places plain, flat. So she learned her Old Testament as she stitched. And there would have been a pattern book with all these motifs. And she would have been allowed to choose. From different ones to actually add to the set. It's in relatively good condition, original frame, nice bordering. So, you brought it along to sell it? Yes, I have actually, yeah. So what are you going to do with the money? Uh, I'm just going to pull it towards a holday. That's what I'd like to do, to go somewhere there for a week, summer. Right, but we're not talking about Caribbean holiday here, are we? That could be on the cards. Are oh, you reckon yeah. that's on the cards, do you? You're <laughs> such an optimist. I can only try, can't I? Absolutely. Yeah. OK, well, there's two things that I'm going to point out to you. One is this black, it's very strong, and it makes the image a little bit unbalanced. Right. So I'm taking that into account. And you've got a little bit of damage here. These holes are moth holes. Right. So yeah. all of that's making me... It's a good age out. for this age as well, too. It's, it's still complete, really. You know I, mean? I, I have to agree with you. Yeah. So let's get some money on the table and yeah. see if you agree with me. That will be fine, yeah. Right. 20, 40, 60, 80. 80 on the table. Could you go a little bit more? I could put 100 on the table. How do you feel about that? Yes, I'll be quite happy to accept that. You're happy with that? So we have a deal? Yes, we have a deal. We shake on it. Cheers, thank you. Thank you for bringing Cheers. it in. She gave me £100, and, uh, which is a great deal, really, because I just paid a ten for the car boot. Wow, well done, Hadrian. That's a £90 profit and definitely the real deal. Okay. Next, a pretty owl's landed at John Parker's table. The Duke and auctioneer Colin Young can spot quality and are keen to get a look in, too. What do you know about it? I always thought it was perhaps one of a pair. I thought it was a pepper pot, but I always thought it should have been a salt pot to go with it as well. And you've had, have you had it a long time? Has it been in the family? It was my grand's, yeah, right. so it's been in the family since then. There's a lot of sort of folklore about owls and their wisdom, and I think, I think they bring very good luck. And he's really beautiful. He's silver, as I'm sure you yeah. know. Yeah. And he's got these lovely little eyes and the beautiful detailing of the feathers. And it's, it's so sweet. Have you any idea what it's worth? You probably have. No, I haven't. You haven't? No. So why are you selling it? 
Well, it's just been in a drawer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here all the time. It's in a drawer, it's in a cupboard, and we don't use it. Yes. I'll bring it along today and just see, see what yeah. it was worth, yeah. Very endearing, a wonderful creature. Mm -hmm. And then the silversmith, yeah. George Richards and Brown. Now, I'm not a silver man, but does that ring any bells with you, Colin? It doesn't for that type of object. Uh, there's various other names that <laughs> would have come to me straight away. Uh, Thomas and Hilliard, uh, Samson Morden. Samson Morden. Well, yeah. this has got all the quality of that. It has. So, you know, you can't doubt the object because you can see the quality. It's sound, it's clean, it's quality. It's ticking all the boxes for me. And John is a good quality dealer. Let's see what he puts on the table. Start off with one of those. And all three colours now. I think it's worth a little bit more. A little bit more than that? Mm. OK, well, let's take that one away, put him away, and bring out another one of those. A bit close. Am I tempting you? A little bit, yeah. Good information for me. <laughs> 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 well, let's put that other one back, round it up to 100. No, I still think it's probably it worth a bit, a bit more. more. Right, well, let's take that one away again, and let's put him down. No, I still think he's probably worth a bit more. I think he's worth a bit more? Mm. Slowly, so let's take him away, those three. Let's put that one down and one of those. No, I don't no. think so. No. As Macbeth said, be resolute. <laughs> well, that's a bit of a slow start. I think I expected a bit more than that. I think it's a good strategy. OK. Bringing out the 20s instead of the 50s. OK, the strategy is bring out the 20s in, instead of the 50s. My strategy is to rush in there as fast as I can go and say, no way, Jose. £140. Am I getting close? Am I tempting you? I've rushed it at this stage, John, oh. to say, no, you are not close. And, and I've come in earlier, and I'll tell you why, because when you came along this, mo this morning, Vida, you... You had no idea the value of this very small piece of silver. Mm. 450 to 650 is the range. I can see that glint in your eye thinking, <laughs> blimey, he's ruined this lot, hasn't he? <laughs> 450 to 650 is what both the independent value and the auctioneer say. It's novelty and it's beautiful and it's desirable and they want them there in the sale room. Fresh goods to the market in mint condition. OK. Right. Well, we've both learned something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let us put down another 50. 200. 250. 300. 350. 400 pounds. Another one, Her Majesty. My lucky number is 470, because it's my school number. So, 470. Can't you change that for another one of those? <laughs> oh, you've done this before, I think. <laughs> there you are, we've got £500 on the table. What do you think, Colin? Well, at 500 is good offer. I'd, I'd love to have a crack at it in the sale room. Like. Did you see that? Quick look round. <laughs> Looking round to <laughs> him indoors. What do you think? OK, £500 on the table now. There's still a profit in that, but he needs a profit. That's what dealers work for. So make your mind up. So £500, it really is, is my limit. Do we have a deal? Yes, I think so. We do. Okay. Very kind. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's join David Tupman, where Nick's got an intriguing story, proving diamonds aren't always forever. Is this something that's been thrown at you by a former girlfriend? Or? Well, there's a funny story to it, really. Um, I, got, I acquired it in Vegas. I'd gone for quite a long time. I'd gone for three months, and I'd run out of money after about the first what, month or to so. to gamble with? To play cards. I used to play cards what, for a living. Yeah, oh. yeah. I met this girl, and we, she was there for about a week or so, and um, when she left, uh, I found that in my pocket. She knew that I didn't have any money and she'd just left me that. And so, played cards again, as you would, got it back, and I could never find the girl again, so... What a fantastic story. 
And, and why are you sending it? To have a game of cards tonight? No, no. Um, <laughs> I'm with my partner and we're expecting a baby in a couple of months. Does this so. not fit her finger? Uh, well, I wouldn't like to give that one as, a, <laughs> as a, an engagement ring. I see. Three stone diamond ring, hallmarks on the inside. It says 750, so it's 18 karat gold. And three not bad diamonds. I mean, I'm not a jewellery dealer, but it looks, you know, it's just a very clean ring. Have you got a, obviously you've got an idea of, of what you pawned it for, but yeah. have you got any idea of what I you're have, looking yeah. for its day? I have, yeah. I don't know how to match a story like that. It's yeah. brilliant, isn't it? Okay, let's get some money out of my pocket. 50, 100, 150. 200 pounds. I did get more than that for it when I pawned it in Vegas, to be honest. Obviously going to have to put a bit more down, aren't they? You are, yes, please. 220, 240, 260 quid. Still not quite there. I think a uh, wonderful story. Well, it's I think about... I just heard parts heard... of it. Oh, it's a brilliant story. Did I hear that right? You were in Vegas, you were gambling. I was, yeah. You met this American girl. <laughs> Are you sure she didn't put the ring in your, in your pocket in the hope that you might put it on her finger? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I couldn't you, find you it. You ran out of money at the tables. <laughs> I did. Um, she said, have my ring. She was there for about four or five days, yes. and I spent the time with her. And then when she went back to Colorado, um, yes. I found that ring in my pocket after I'd left her in, in the oh, airport. Oh, I see. So yeah. did she know that you had lost oh, the yeah, Vegas? Oh, yeah, yes. And was, so what she'd done she'd is slip me. the ring into your That's pocket. Right, yeah. Now, 250 to 350 is what the independent valuers are saying. 260 is on the table. If you go to the sale room, if you got the 350, take away about 60 quid, you'd be at 290. So it's almost there. But that's the higher end of the estimate. If it only fetches 300 in the sale room, then you're... I'm prepared to go to auction. Yeah? I am. What about if I squeeze... We'll see what colour it is, shall we? 280, 300 pounds. And that's my final offer, Nick. Take it or leave it. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to auction. Well, good luck to you. Thank okay. you. Well, I was offered 300 um, for the ring. I'm prepared to go to auction. There's still a little bit of a gamble left in me. David Tupman offered near the top estimate there. After the break, will the buyers be willing to pay more for Nick's ring at auction? 400 pounds for it, 400. 400, surely. Three. And will he be able to part with it? Are you actually thinking now, I don't want to sell this? It's, it's worth a lot in look value. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Before the break, Nick turned down David Tupman's offer of £300 for his diamond ring. He's all spruced up in the sale room now, and it's about to go under the gavel. We've got the ring, it's coming up now. Three modern diamonds, a third of a carat, two quarter carats. It's got a fantastic story. If it was me, I'd never part with that. Well, exactly, that's I, what I I'd have it strung round my neck. <laughs> the next time I went to that poker table, I'd have that ring round my neck. Mm. It's a lucky ring, I don't mind if it doesn't sell. Okay. In line, three stone set diamond ring this time. 400 pounds for it, 400, three. 300 pounds. They're calling for three. 200 down here, at 200 pounds bid, at 200. 220 now, may I say. But any more bids before I go to the book? At 200 pounds bid, 220, 240, 260, 280, 300. Are you actually thinking now, I don't want to sell this? It's, it's worth a lot in look value. 400, 420, 440, 460, 480, 500. At 500 pounds, commission bidder takes it at 500 pounds bid. Yeah, I'm happy, I'm happy, it's good, it's good. Commission bidder takes it at £500. £500, that's the good news. And I like when you're gambling, you have charges on the table. Yeah, We've got charges great. in the sale room, 410 you're going home with. Okay. I know gamblers because gamblers are very superstitious people. And I'm going to say to you, do you think you've done the right thing here by selling this ring? Um, yeah, I'd say. 
<laughs> On the day, another gamble. The crap dice went down. Five hundred pounds under the gavel. Take it on four hundred and ten pounds. Where's he going next? Back to Vegas. <laughs> that was the real deal. Let's hope the ring brings someone else some of that good luck. Back to the dealer's den where it's time to meet Jill. I've just brought my grandmother's watch, which we've had in the family for about 60 years. I hope somebody will value it and uh, love it. Let's see whether James Late is up to the task. So what's the story? It was my grandmother's. It was a long service watch. Yeah. Uh, she'd been with the firm for 50 years. Which in firm? The, which firm? Was uh, it a local? Pearson Brothers. What uh, did they do? Uh, it was the local lace makers. And is it is it inscribed? Yes, they've. Uh, they've oh, on the back, yeah. Yes, that's right. Presented to Mrs. A. Branlow. That's your. That's my grandmother. Your grandmother, right? Yes. For long service with George Pearson and Sons Limited. So there's no doubting the provenance of that, is there? No, no. And this is its original box. Obviously. That's right, yes. So it's from a, a local Nottingham maker. Yes, uh, yeah. I'm afraid another it, firm's taken it over now. It looks as if it's the original strap. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah. Everything is original. Yeah. So did she not wear it very much? Uh, my grandmother wore it a time or two. Uh, yeah. Then my mother, yeah. I think she only wore it a couple of times as well. And, you, and I, you I've don't. had it for the last 50 years. And I'm afraid it's been like that ever since. And it's dating from before the war? No, 45. 45, so oh, just, yes. just at the end of the war? Yes. Okay. And this is all the original? original yes, everything case. is original. It's in that lovely condition. It is, yes. Yeah. 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 So you're not sad to see it go at all? Not really, because no. as I say, it's just been locked away in a drawer and uh, it's only the fact that I'm sort of having a good clear out, as you might say, and I thought, oh well. So you, re you yes. rediscovered it? Right. <laughs> right, well, let's put some money on the table. You got to buy another watch with it? No, I've, got, I've already got a good watch. It's okay. going towards a holiday. Oh, oh right, yes. okay. So I'd like to offer you 10, 20, 30. 40, 50, 60 pounds for it. No. No, 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 no. You're very sure about yes, that. Yes, yes. No, I'd like a bit more than that. OK. Um, 70, 80. No, just, just a little bit. Still not enough? No, not, not really. When you say little, do you mean little or do you mean lots? Well, not too <laughs> much. Not a, not a lot, lot, but a, a yeah. little more than that, please. Um, I don't want to go too much more than that. Um, Ninety pounds. There we are. No, just a, just another one, please. Just, just round it off, Tom. Right, we've got a deal, have we? Yes. A, a, well, oh, that's good. That's good. You were quite easy, really. So a hundred pounds. Yes, that's fine. Okay. We'll go to a good home. I'll try and find it a good home, okay. and I hope you have a lovely holiday. Right, thank you very much. Across to Corrie, and how much is that doggy on the table? Are you a dog lover? I am, yes. How did you come by it? I used to have a second-hand shop, mm -hmm. and I used to buy boxes of things at auction mm -hmm. and um, sell them in my shop. And that was in a box with a few items, and I just thought I really liked it, so I put it on my wall. Do you mind me asking why you wanted to sell it? I'm moving house, yeah. so I've got expenditure and it's time to declutter. Not that it takes up a lot of space. I was going to say that, yeah. <laughs> Not huge, is it? Um, and I just thought it was time for somebody else to cherish it, really. So let's have a look at it. I'm going to put my glasses on. And I'm not too sure what that bridge is. It looks like a French bulldog, maybe? I wondered if it was a Boston Terrier, although Could I don't be. even really know what a Boston Terrier looks yeah. like, but that's what came to mind. Neither do I, but... <laughs> and on the back, it says, this is a genuine watercolour drawing and a hand-carved frame by W.M. Mitchell. I researched it a few years ago and um, realised that um, he's a Canadian artist, yeah. Willard Mitchell, and he died in 1955, and he mostly seems to do um, landscapes. So, so he was a landscape... So why he did that, and the detail in that seems more than the, usually get in the landscape, so I imagine for a friend or... Or maybe it, maybe it was his own dog. Yeah. yeah. How it ended up in Nottingham, I've got no idea. Well, I think it's very sweet, and I like the way it's presented. I mean, obviously, he made the frame for this little picture, so I imagine you're right, it's a gift. Hard to value, because really, I'm looking at it, and it's not old enough to be particularly antique. No. And yet it's sweet. So we're really just putting a value on it that's 
emotional almost. There isn't a Which there isn't is what a real do value. To you. <laughs> <laughs> so let's put it let's put some money on the table. Twenty forty. That buys an ear. Whoa. <laughs> I'm not going to go that much further. It's not old enough to be of value as a miniature painting. It's just for another dog lover who's really going to like it like you did. Okay. And see the appeal. So I'm going to put 10. And that's very near my limit. How do you feel about 50? Well, before you make a decision, I'll tell you what I think about it. Very charming. It's a Boston Terrier, isn't it? I've, I've always thought it was, but I didn't know why. Well, I we've done a bit of quick research on the internet, and I think it is a Boston Terrier. I'm going to say £50, I think, is a little bit on the low side. I'd be pushing towards the 80. But if you went to auction, there is a deduction of a commission. But I think it could do a little bit more than the 80 in auction. Thank you. 50 on the table. I'm going to take the 10 away and put down at 20. Just 60 on the table. That's a nice round number. That's a nice round number, yeah. Uh, and that is my final offer. OK. So I've got to make a decision mm. and I'm deciding that me and my little doggy will take one last trip to auction. Well, I think you could do really well and I wish you the very, very best of luck at Thank auction. Thank you. got you up to 60, but David came in and uh, thinks it might be worth a little bit more auction, so that's what we're going to do. So, on David's advice, Yvonne and her four-legged friend are off to the sale room. But will this dog have its day? Sat down with Cory Jeffries, our dealer, on the dealer's day, and she offered you 60 quid. Why didn't you grab the 60 quid offer there and then? You know, a profit of perhaps £59.50. Because life is full of missed opportunities, and if I hadn't come here, I'd have missed one. Simple as that, really. Do you like that? Hey, that, that that's got to me. I You've like got the whole that. process. You can't just do a part of a process. I thought 50 to 80 was a realistic valuation, and it wouldn't surprise me if it brought a little bit more, but we need one or two of those dog lovers here today to compete against each other. Indeed. Uh, to push the price up, but I think this is worth a gamble, and it's coming up now. Go, lot 180, WM Mitchell. This is a miniature study of a Boston Terrier. Nice little picture, this one. Sub at 100 for it. 100, 50 pounds, and 50 is coming in at 50. 40 pounds, surely. 40, 40 on bid already at 40 pound bid. At 40 bid, 42 now, make it at 42 bid. 45 again now, at 42, but a bid, five anywhere else now, five to a seat. It's worth the money you turn down all day long. 50, 50 and five, at 50 pounds bid. Five, anybody else going to join in in the room? Nope, at 50, we're on the net then, at 50. At 50, you, you're a little bit short, but this commission can be taken off. Yeah. Well, then we sell this time at 50 pounds. Well, there's good news and bad news here. You said you wanted to see the full process. And I have. And you have. You've satisfied that desire. You paid 50p. We've got a bit of commission to take off. I make that 41 quid. What have you got to say about the process now? I'll be very pleased to get my 41 pounds. I like that. I loved every minute of it. I like that. I, I'd have done the same thing, so that's just the way it comes out. On the day, the real deal uh, was with Corey, our dealer. Corey, you've always got a good eye, you're always a spirited bidder, and that, darling, is the real deal. Let's catch up with David Tupman now, where seller George is hoping to get this deal all boxed up. What have you brought in for us today? Well, a silver box, and that's all we really know about it. <laughs> right. Have you had it a long time? It was my wife's grandma's trinket box. And uh, was she abroad at all, or did she...? Not, no. You don't know where she got it from? No, we don't. No idea. Right, well, let's have a quick look at it. Lovely shape, obviously silver, but looking at it, not marked. Uh, and obviously, from the shape of it, I would say that it's sort of Islamic or Indian or Sri Lankan, that part of the world, uh, and probably was for containing beetle nuts, which they used to oh, eat. Yeah. I, they yeah. didn't take snuff in that part of the world, so it's not a snuff box. But very charming, lovely pattern, and a great shape. Just got to make up my mind a little bit about what I think it's going to be worth. Why, why are you getting rid of it? Well, it's just been kicking about in the drawer, and, and have that you got, was the only reason, really. Yeah, and have you got something you want to do with the money, or is it...? Uh, 
Well, it depends how much in one year. It's not going to really. buy you a new car, let's put it that way. Well, no, indeed. not really, no. OK, well, I do think it's going to be worth an enormous amount yeah. of money. I think it's probably late 19th century, maybe about 100 years old, maybe early 20th century. So let's put some money down on the table. 20, 40, 60 pounds. That's probably worth a little bit more, I would have thought. Do you think so? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yes, I don't think it's worth very much more no. than that. Can I tempt you with another tenner? 70 pounds. If you change that one to a 20, then yes, we have a deal. OK, George, I'll do that. 80 pounds, how does that sound? That's fine, that's a deal. You happy with that? I am, yes. Great, thank you very thank much you. indeed. Coming up, there's only one word on John Parker's table. No. 170. No. Are we approaching the finishing line? No, sorry. Can he turn a nay into a yay? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Let's catch up with James, where today his palms are crossed with gold. So you brought along your coin collection? Yes, I have. But how long have you had them? Since 2000. My father collected them some years ago. OK. Because these are, these are all fairly modern, aren't they? That's right. And really, these were made to sell as investments rather than as, as coins. That's correct. I mean, they don't have much numismatic no. interest or value. So really, we're talking about gold, aren't we? Yeah. It used to be a way of buying gold. Gold and leaf. keeping, yeah. Because um, I think I'm right in saying there used to be no VAT on gold coins. Is That's that right? correct. And who wants to pay VAT on, on coins, really? <laughs> so I've had a look at them. Yeah. Um, these are from Equatorial Guinea. That's right. This is from El Salvador. El Salvador. And those are Bahamas. Bahamas. And they're all kind of from the government mints, aren't they? That is correct, yeah. yeah. They don't do a lot for me, but I'll try and buy them from you so that I can make a tiny profit. That'll be nice for you. Uh, <laughs> well, you're obviously going to make a nice profit. <laughs> oh, yes. I hope so. All right. Um, let's see. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, 2, 220, 240, 260, 280, 3, 320, 330, 340, 350, 360, 370, 380, 390, 400. No, I'm afraid not. Not. So that means you want more. Quite a bit more. Ah, yes, OK. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 500. It's warming now. Only warming? Only warming. I thought I was getting pretty hot. Not quite. You're, you're there. Um, well, a no little right. bit more and I'll... A little bit more. Have a, you might I'm, have a deal. I think I'm going to go to 520, 540. Well, I've just been looking at the paperwork on this. Five to six hundred pounds is the estimation. The scrap value is around 620, 630, something like that. On the day, for what is there, that is a sound offer. All right. Well, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. You're happy with that I'll as well? I'll take it. So we've got a deal? Yeah, we've got a deal. Thank you very much. Thank you. For bringing them. Let's pop over to John's table, where Elizabeth's brought in a piece of royal Worcester. We've got a lovely little vase here. What do you know about it? It was my grandmother's. Uh, right. Yes. She left it me in her will. My sister had one pat, and I had that one. You know what factory it is, do you? I only know that it was a, a painted by Parker, and he didn't paint very many. Oh, my name's Parker. Is it? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. I didn't know that. <laughs> but the quality is borne out by the fact that we here we have 
the mark of the Royal Worcester factory in purple, yes. with possibly a design name there, I can't read it. Very pretty, we've got pear decoration with pear blossom and all the lovely gilt. You know, having been in the business for a long time, you just look at it and it's, it just reeks of quality. Yes. It's, it's really nice to see and it's yes. in perfect condition. Even the gilding has lasted, it's not rubbed. No. Tiny little bits in here. Well, let me see if I can tempt you. Right. So that's 50, 100, 150. Are we tempted? No. More. <laughs> Let's go to this pocket here. 170. No. Are we approaching the finishing line? Not yet. No, sorry. Well, let me... 190. No, that's my darling think. No. Nope. He says no. He no. says no. £190. Ah. I see you're turning around. You're getting a bit of advice from your <laughs> husband, are you? <laughs> well, let me tell you what the independent valuers and the auctioneers say. Right, Royal Worcester, it's a sign piece. They're saying two to three hundred. Right. You have 190 on the table. If it's perfect, it's not rubbed, it's in good condition, it should get within the two to three hundred uh, estimation. But bear in mind, there is still 50% to take out, but you need more than that. Thank you, David. Thank you. Right, well, I tell you what I'm going to do. Right. I'm going to take away the two twenties, and I'm going to put down 200. Well, a little more, please. Oh. He did say. Well, I'm going to. I'm going to do. He did say a little bit more. I'm going to do 210, and then that's it. There's no more then. No. 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 Well, I think if you don't mind, I'll take it to auction. That's fine, and I, I wish you all the very best. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, I think I'm slightly disappointed. It's such lovely quality. I quite like pears as well, so, you know, I might have eaten the bars, you never know. I'm off to auction, fingers crossed, and see what happens there. Let's hope it goes your way in the sale room, Elizabeth. So why have you decided to part with it now? Um, two reasons. Um, one, my cat Coco nearly knocked it over, David. Coco? Coco. And the other reason is I would like probably to go on a cruise if it sells. On your own or with the partner? With the partner, yes. Lot number 135 is a Royal Worcester uh, blush ivory urn. There I didn't are... say this, but I had an offer that if, if the partner didn't come, I could have gone, perhaps. Yes, it's true. <laughs> See the kind of offers you get on this show. <laughs> Stomach, 300 pounds for it. 300, two to go then, surely. 200, 150 if you like, 150. 150 bids, 60 now to a C at 150 bids, 60 again, surely at 150 bids, 60 now to a C, 150 bids, 60, 160. This seems like a cruise around Blackpool Tower, <laughs> this to me. Not the Mediterranean. <laughs> 170 bid, 180 or not now. At 170, 80 or not now for the Blush Worcester. It's not going to go, David. It's not no, going to go, no. is it? All done at 170. I'm afraid I have to withdraw that one then, ladies and gentlemen. It didn't quite make the £210, which means... The cruise is off for the moment. <laughs> for the moment. <laughs> for the moment, OK. Bit disappointed? No, David, I've had a lovely day, thank you. And I've enjoyed meeting you, it's yes. been a lovely day. So yes. the real deal goes to John Parker, <laughs> £210. <laughs> that was the real deal. Mm -hmm. After the break, Marcia's on a mission. You know exactly what you want, don't yes. you? Yes. <laughs> That's what I love, a woman of decision. She's like, yes, I know what I want. <laughs> but can Cory meet her demands? So we're near, are we? No, 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 not near. We're I, think not it, near. I think it's worth a bit more. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Things are just starting to wind down after a busy day here in Nottingham. For our final deal, we're with Corey, where Sala Marcia's going for gold. How'd you come by it? Uh, my partner was a gift. He gave it to you as a present? Yes, as a present, yes. Well, I think that's a very good present. It's lovely, isn't it? It's yeah. lovely. <laughs> Did you wear it? No, my wrist is a bit too big for it. It's very small, really. Okay. And how long ago? About 10, 12 years ago. 10, 12 years yes. ago. 
Well, I think you're going to be surprised at how good a gift it was. I so let's so, look yeah. at it. <laughs> okay, you've got the ring and our set of nine carat gold. Mm -hmm. And you've got a half sovereign. Yeah. And you know sovereigns are 22 karat gold. Yes. Fine gold. Aware of that. Yes. Yeah. You know that. And it is actually a very small size, isn't yes. it? Yes. So it is a quite a neat size. Mm. And and again, it bracelet's quite a small size. And again, you've got three Victorian sovereigns, mm. all in 22 karat. And the bracelet itself, with a little padlock, is nine yeah. karat gold. So really what we're looking at here is the gold content, aren't we? Yes. Because as a bracelet, it's small, it's hard to wear, same goes yes, for the ring. But, as I'm sure you're aware, gold has gone up enormously yes, I over the past that, 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it was a very good investment. Yes, it was. Yeah, and glad you didn't sell it straight away. Mm. Yeah, bit of luck there. Yes. So you know exactly what you want, don't yes. you? Yes, that's what I love. A woman of decision. She's like, yes, I know what I want. It's just down to me to put some money on the table. Yes. OK, let's, let's sort it out. So we're going to put down 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500, 550, 600, 650, 700, 750, 800, 850, 900, 950, 1,000. Now, you know that if you go to auction, mm. you lose 15% plus the VAT on that. Yeah. So we're near, are we? No, 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 we're not near. We're not near. I think it's worth a bit more. You've got 1100, mm -mm. 1150. Mm. And now I'm very near. You've got 1200 on the table. 1200 pounds is on the table. The estimation from the auctioneer was around about 1,000 to 1,250, something like that. If I was to send you to the auction and the gavel went down at 1,000 pounds, the buyer would have to pay a premium of 150 pounds. Mm -hmm. But you, as a seller, would have to take 15% off your 1,000. <laughs> Now, Corrie is a very experienced dealer and she's quite canny and she just knows the value of this. But in fairness, she has only left herself, in my opinion, a reasonable margin. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, she's entitled to that profit. She's laying out £1,200. And so I'm going to say to you, the offer on the table is as good as I believe you can get. And the profit margin for our dealer is fair and is honest and I'm going to say that is a good deal. Yeah, I'll take the deal. It's a deal, isn't yes, it? Thank Have you. a deal. Thank you. Now I'm very happy. I've got more than I expected to get. And I'm going to go off on a lovely holiday now and spend it all. Bon voyage, Marcia. As for our dealers, have they been getting good results? John only made one purchase today with the Silver Owl Pepper Pot. I really like it, and I'm sure that somebody else will feel the same. Not yet, as it remains unsold. Oh, dear, John. Meanwhile... We've got a deal, have we? Yes. Uh, oh, that's good. James sold on the cocktail watch, squeezing out a £10 return. And after paying £540 for the gold coins. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. You're happy with that as well? I'll take it. He sold them at a trade fair, clearing a tidy sum. <laughs> David Tuckman shares in James's success, right. having yeah, sold yeah. the silver box on for £110. As for Corrie, she found yes. buyers for both the gold and the Victorian sampler, making her a neat little profit. But she didn't do as well as seller Hadrian. He paid just £10 for the sampler from a car boot sale, then sold it on to Corrie for a whopping 100 The money's been flying around. Our sellers have walked away with almost £3,000. We've had a great day. There's been lots of action, lots of bidding, lots of buying. That's what we like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal.
Bye for now.